Well, so it's as easy as ABC. If you're not satisfied with the customer service of your service provider, you just have to port to another network. Well, I did the same. I don't know about you. Well, let's continue. And uh, talking about raising more hosts for entrepreneurs, youth in entrepreneurship here in the country. Quite recently, the president outdoored a 10 million youth enterprise support fund to also help the youth contribute their bid to building the nation. And we have a visiting professor from the Manchester University Professor P.K. Richardson who has expressed a worry uh, with this 10 million youth enterprise support fund uh, saying that it would not be put to good use if proper measures are not put in place to scrutinize the beneficiaries. Known as the YES Project, it is already seeking proposals from interested youth who seek funding to support the ideas. We've been joined in the studios by the professor to tell us more reasons why he is citing these comments. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Paul and thanks for joining us on Midday Live. Pleasure to be on your well, well, program. You're welcome. Now, let's look at reasons why you are citing that if it is not put to good use, it would not benefit the country. Right. Money itself doesn't generate wealth. It's only when money is used properly that it generates wealth. And the government is very happy to put out 10 million. The question is, Who's going to get this 10 million? What is it going to be used for? Who's going to be in charge of monitoring it? How do we determine who gets it? There's the danger that some people will feel, this is my right. You know, there's a term that I've heard in Ghana, this is my, my portion of the national cake. And therefore, I take it and I go away and I blow it the way I want. How are we going to make sure that those who actually get the money will put it to good use? Because the mere spending the money does not mean there will be good results. It must be spent right. How are we going to determine that? So how do we determine that? As well, I'm, I, I don't know the very details of this, but I'm sure the funds will be in the hands of some committee. Mm. Somebody will be responsible for allocating it. Now, this committee or one person I don't know must ensure who qualifies. What sort of projects do we fund? How do we ensure that whoever applies for part of the money is actually serious? But I am sure that is the reason why you would have to present a proposal. So they have put some right. measures in place. That's right. So they must have the KPIs. What qualifies as a fundable project, for example? Because people are going to drum up all sorts of things. I mean, 10 million. I want part of it. Everybody wants part of it. And this is the national cake. I want my part. Mm, but don't you, so, don't you think that the proposal aspect, they have lined up all these issues that you are raising I hope in they acquiring have. That, that is my the, the amount of money you need? I hope they have. First, they should be able to determine, you know, which product or projects actually look good enough to fund. You see, in order to create wealth, three things are important. One, knowledge or competence. This young man must prove that he's got the knowledge to do what he says he's going to do. All right? Second point is the desire and the will, the seriousness, the discipline to actually go and do it. The third point, well, the third factor is resource money. Mm. So the money is coming in. It's, has this guy got the competence to actually deliver using the money what he says he's going to do? And is he serious anyway? You see, that heart, the second point is very important. You can have money, you can have knowledge, and still not deliver anything. Mm -hmm. Because you don't, you know, you just spend the time, you waste the time. If you take it at the national level, for example, Nigeria, you've got the competence. Nigerians are very well educated. They are very, very knowledgeable. They've got the competence. Resource, money, the third point, they've got it. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. But the will, the heart, and the desire to take that money, use that knowledge, and build a country is lacking. Right. So this country is not developing. Okay. So it's important that we make sure we get all three points. They've got the knowledge, the competence to do what they say they're going to do. They mean business. Mm. They've got the heart and the will and the discipline to take that money well, and deliver results. Prof, let, let's wrap up the interview looking yeah. at the aspects where Ghana can build her youth to match up with those in other countries. Right. How do we do that? Wrapping up. I think the first point is we empower them with knowledge. Knowledge is power. Because without knowledge, you don't do anything. 
You don't go around the street looking for anybody you meet to come and type your stuff for you. That person must know how to type in the first place. So we skill people. It's become a knowledge world. Knowledge is power. We skill them. And then the discipline and the leadership of being an honest broker. You know that if we put this guy in charge of this, he will actually do the job he wants to do. So the hard part is the biggest. Okay. We need to get people, train them, skill them, and uh, motivate them and empower them to feel to do what is right. Right. And that is important. And I'll be doing a session on that on Tuesday. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Thank you. And I picked three things from you. Knowledge, discipline, and training. That is the key. Three things for the 10 million youth enterprise support fund. Professor P.K. Richardson is a visiting professor from the Manchester University telling us more about that fund. Well, that will do for business now. Later at 4.30, join us for more updates. I'm Nani Kiasari. Have a good afternoon.